morning. I'm Dennis Stanford. I'm the director of the Paleo Indian Program, the Department of Anthropology here at Natural History. Our main uh, research focus is looking for who were the first Americans, when did they get here, where did they come from, and how they developed in face of the changing uh, late Pleistocene environment. Ha, that works. We used to think that Clovis people who had distinctive projectile points like the one in the center of this slide were the first Americans and they came from Asia crossing the Bering Land Bridge and down the ice recorder and populated the whole country. Uh, unfortunately this was a good idea but it is no longer holding water. If we look at this map uh, there are two important issues here. One, the oldest radiocarbon dates for Clovis are in the southeast part of the United States and most of the Clovis archaeological sites are along the east coast of North America. In fact, when we look at this slide, there are more Clovis sites on the Delmarva Peninsula, uh, an area of land that's 170 miles by 70 miles, than there are in the entire western part of the United States. So, uh, given that idea, and knowledge, we decided to look at other possible areas. Uh, and one of the real problems with Clovis is that the technology does not exist in Asia, but the, uh, a similar technology does uh, exist in Europe during the Paleolithic time periods during a time called Salutrian. And so looking at the, uh, the Salutrian technology and the ages, uh, we formulated a hypothesis that the Salutrian people uh, were actually hunting along the uh, southern edge of the uh, ice Free corridor, uh, or not the ice Free corridor, the uh, uh, North Atlantic ice, and they probably were uh, hunting uh, seals and, and uh, uh, sea mammals and, and seabirds, and they were using uh, 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 boats about like the uh, Karak uh, that you see in, in Ireland, which are large boats that haul as much as 20 people in their gear. Uh, they're made out of lath, wicker kind of construction, and then covered with uh, either uh, an animal hide of some kind, seals, uh, generally in the north, but also uh, bovids. Um, <clears throat> The problem with trying to find boats in the archaeological uh, assemblages is that uh, all of the original early boats are underwater. Sea level has risen uh, about 300 feet uh, since people, uh, uh, since the uh, Ice Age, and uh, it just means that the evidence is out there underwater. Uh, and but we do have indirect evidence. For instance, uh, in the South Pacific, we know that uh, Australia and those islands, uh, many islands, were populated by 50,000 years ago. Uh, other indirect evidence are uh, uh, raw materials being transported from islands to uh, uh, mainland. This happened uh, uh, in Japan some 30, 39,000 years ago. And we even see obsidians from the Mediterranean moving into the mainland of Greece. Uh, by about 14,000 years ago, suggesting that there are boats out there. Uh, in North America, uh, the uh, best example we have of that kind of distribution is this projectile point that you see uh, on the screen, which is uh, one of the early varieties of uh, points in North America, and it's made out of Rama Chert. Rama Chert comes from uh, Rama Bay, way up in Labrador, and uh, as you can see, the artifact was found uh, on the upper strand line of uh, the Champlain Sea in Vermont. And uh, in order to get that rock from its source in Labrador, somebody had to go by boat and surpass over 200 miles of marine glaciers against the uh, Labrador current. In other words, you had a pretty sophisticated boat and a pretty sophisticated skipper, if you will, that knew how to tack, get up to Labrador, and then get back uh, before winter set in. 
when you start looking at that area of North America at the end of the last ice age, you can see from this uh, a map that just recently came out from the Corps of Engineers uh, while they were mapping Fort Drum, that uh, <clears throat> uh, having a boat up there is a really good idea. Uh, you're not going to get around too much without one. So we've been looking at uh, uh, finding a site here uh, in, on the Delmarva Peninsula where we could test the boat idea, uh, and we uh, settled on a site that's on uh, Mockhorn Island in the state of Virginia, off the coast of Virginia. Uh, the environment at the time the Clovis people lived there was uh, uh, open grasslands with fur and, and various tree stands. The site was originally located on a stream, a uh, freshwater stream that emptied almost directly into the Susquehanna at the point where the burgeoning uh, Chesapeake Bay uh, was forming. Uh, here's the site. It's a really difficult site to work on because it's uh, basically underwater or going underwater and you have to start fresh every day with a new square. Uh, the site uh, produced a bunch of uh, really good Clovis artifacts but the important uh, uh, artifacts that I want to look at are the ones called wedges and chisel bits. And there's literally hundreds of these uh, objects at that site. And there's a number of other sites in northeastern North America that are situated in the same uh, situation close to major water sources where you get a whole lot of these kinds of artifacts which uh, I consider woodworking tools. And uh, just recently since we even uh, put this abstract together for this talk, a paper has been published where in uh, uh, northern Europe uh, similar sites have been found with the same kinds of artifacts, but on islands off the coast of Norway and Sweden, which the only way you could actually access those sites was uh, by boat. And so people were uh, getting up there during the end of the Ice Age, so I think we see that these uh, uh, boats spread all the way across that part of uh, uh, the North Atlantic. And here you can see two artifacts, one from Mockhorn Island and the other from uh, this is one of the major source, uh, types of artifacts used in, in woodworking. So uh, I thank you very much. We hope that uh, while digging in Mockhorn, maybe we'll find some buried boats, but uh, I don't think we will. But you never know. You never know. And uh, but I'm sure they had them. Thank you. <laughs>